What is going on? It's Alex coming back at you with another video. And today we're going to be doing day two, rounds two and three of this 2025 NFL mock draft. If you are new, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Go check out round one if you haven't already, but we will be doing a very quick recap of the trades as well as the actual selections. So let's get on into this. Blow my face with my board below. There are all the great ways to get involved in the community. Just t do yourself a favor. Go to that link tree and it takes you to everything that you ever need. But in case you want some reminders, it'll be, you know, scrolling below my face. But let's go back to the beginning. You guys can read, but I'm going to pretty much just talk about the trades. And then if we did have a placeholder who it was for, because PFF still doesn't have all the guys on there. It is what it is. Um, this is the reverse Super Bowl draft order as of, I think, two days ago, because yesterday I ended up being able to take a little bit of time off to be able to spend it with my family. So, you know, or with potentially my future family. You guys know the deal. But at number three, I had the Panthers and uh, I had the Giants trade up with the Panthers and they ended up selecting their top QB. Someone said, why trade if the Broncos are not going to be taking their own QB? You have to think larger than the guys in front of New York. You have to also believe that there are other teams like the Raiders that would have been wanting to move up and potentially some other teams that wanted to get ballsy into that mix. But there was a stretch where I just didn't feel like a trade back was valuable enough for teams maybe even to want to trade up for. So it ended up being a little bit of a slide here, but we had one placeholder and then a trade to end off the draft. You got Xavier Truss here, who is the placeholder for my number seven player in the draft, Marcus Bow. And then uh, had a small little trade up here to Cario Davis, um, you know, was a move up by the Panthers. So they ended up addressing edge rusher and corner number two for the future by being able to just move a fourth round pick. They actually ended up uh, using a lower pick. It might have been an early fifth round pick, like the first of the fifth pick 137. Um, they ended up essentially moving up from the top of the fourth, top of the fifth to the top of the fourth by moving back from one to three and then up from 35 to 32. And that leaves us right here. We will be continuing to re-reference what we've already done. Obviously, this is not uncumulative. This is a very cumulative draft. So let's get on with it. Starting out at number 33, the Bears already drafted Luther Burden. It was a little bit of a ballsy move, but at the same time, I mean, we're even seeing right now, Roma Dunze's not practicing. Keenan Allen's not even practicing. I only the Keenan Allen, I don't believe is even on the team next year. So there's certainly room for improvement. Absolutely. And I think edge two. I think Loki that's solved with Daryl Taylor. I that dude just looks like he's so excited to be a Chicago Bear. He's playing his ass off. It's someone who I think absolutely signifies what you want in that edge two realm. Now, defense interior, I could totally see being a position we target here, but the interior of the offensive line cannot go unnoticed. Caleb's the dude, and we need to protect him. And Donovan Jackson's perfect for that. He even has tackle length arms, so you could end up actually using him and developing him as a tackle. Or you can just get the damn good player that he is at guard. Either way, I don't think it's a bad move. He is agile, he is mobile, and he is damn good. At pick number 34 for the Denver Broncos went Will Johnson at number two overall. So solved our corner two problems with now creating arguably the best corner duo in the NFL. Uh, the right thing to do now is to also look at some left tackles. And uh, Jack Nelson's here. He is someone who I have a lot of respect for. He's somebody who I had even higher than uh, Arianti Urzuri that I sent to the uh, to the Ravens. But at the same time, the Ravens fit Arianti Urzuri with his run blocking ability so much better than with Jack Nelson, who's a little bit more refined. And I think Jack Nelson's perfect to replace Garrett Bowles up for a contract this year. Also had his issues with being on teams that aren't winning. So left tackle is a massive need. Jack Nelson is going to be the perfect selection for you. Six foot seven, just under 320 pounds. And he's had some slip ups this year, three pressures over two games, which in my opinion, those are not games to give up pressures in. But at the same time, I do see him more somebody who gets better as the season goes on. And, you know, excited to see where he goes. At pick 35, we've moved back with the Kansas City Chiefs. Honestly, Isaiah Bond's not out of the question at this point. Hollywood Brown was on for a one year deal. And to be fair, Long-term options at receiver for this team are, you know, not Hollywood Brown, but Xavier Worthy and um, Rushy Rice. So with the potential loss of Travis Kelsey after this year, maybe after the next, you still do need to retool and continue to develop uh, even more firepower. And I do think Isaiah Bond is not out of the question here. Do I think it's the best pick? No, I think Dalen Walker might be. But at the same time, we got to think through the lens of the Kansas City Chiefs. They also will be looking for an offensive guard 
because Trey Smith's going to be going. So to me, there's three picks here that you can go with. There's Jaden Roberts, the most powerful offensive lineman on Bama. Granted, he gave up two pressures versus USF because he just, for some reason, um, pl- I think you just need to move this kid to tackle. And that's my honest opinion. You need to test this kid at tackle Bama. But uh, I think he'll work out developing on the Chiefs just at the moment for Bama. He is not as effective as he should be based on the fact that, well, he's just not in an optimal system that is trained into your offensive lineman. But I digress. Uh, Jaden Roberts, super powerful offensive lineman, right guard as well. Perfect fit for when Trey Smith walks. You might say, oh, why would he walk? Because guards are getting paid $25 million a year. He's arguably one of, if not the best guard in the NFL. Definitely one of. Like, let's not go all the way yet. But one of the best guards in the NFL. Part of the best interior offensive line in the NFL. And that comes at a price tag. So it'll be $25, $26 million a year. You could save that because there's only so much money that can go around. So I do think that's probably the smartest decision. Dayon Walker is a fun one because defensive interior help is always key. With him and Chris Jones, that'd be wild. But Dayon needs a lot of refinement. And the Chiefs are in win-now mode. So even though Jaden Roberts might be the more... You know what? I actually have a big brain move. We're say, we're saying fuck it. We're not going for the guard because Jaden Roberts needs some time to develop. We are going Isaiah Bond. Uh, this team wants extra firepower. You want as day one ready guys as possible. Isaiah Bond is exactly what you're going to be looking for. And just stay tuned. Stay tuned. I have an idea. It popped in my head. So I'm going to try to big brain this one. And it might work. It might absolutely fail. But if it fails, I'll tell you what I thought. And then you guys can give me some feedback on that. At pick 36 for the New England Patriots, a day on Walker would be crazy value at this moment. In the first round, we went after a left tackle in Will Campbell. I do think that you could look at corner here. Uh, You guys brought up some really good counterpoints in the fact that you know, you and you know, Jack Jones is doing a good job, might end up getting that second contract. And, you know, hopefully, you know, he plays that well to where he does. I do think Ed Rusher is certainly in the realm of possibility here. You got Abdul Carter, you got Prince Umamilan. You also have guys like Jack Sawyer, who's producing very, very well. Shamar Stewart, who's done a great job. Jalen Walker. Like there are some really talented edge rushers here. And I have a feeling that three of the next four picks are going to be edge rushers. So I am going to be going after Princely Umamilan here to replace what, you know, he's going to pair up with Keon White and do a fantastic job there. He has great speed to power. And the thing is, he just needs to be a little bit more consistent in the effort and the speed category. Interesting because Christian Barmore fell because of effort issues. Granted, it was the Bill Belichick system that he ended up falling into. Uh, but at the same time, I do have faith that, you know, at least the principles of hard work and just doing what you should be doing will prevail. I'm just praying. But pick number 37 for the commanders. You know, they ended up going a corner in round one because I wanted to change it up. I always go tackle for y'all. So looking at the options, it's edge rusher, it's tackle. Got to go one of those positions. You got to. And Abdul Carter's here. It would be hard to see Dan Quinn pass on that at the same time. Your tackles are not doing too hot. And to be fair, don't force a need because you're going to end up putting yourself in a worse situation. I don't have any super dark horse left tackles that are left. So I can't even pull one out of the bag on you guys right there. So with that in mind, I'll actually scroll down to where my next best guy is, which is Jack Kaiser, technically. Now, it wouldn't be a bad option here, but we are going to be going at Drusher. Now, looking at the options that are available... Uh, Jack Sawyer might be the Washington commander type of guy, but I'm actually going to go after Abdul Carter. People are saying he might transition back to middle linebacker. I think that's a horrible idea. Uh, Abdul Carter had over a 30% missed tackle rate. Yes, that's not solely due to him not being able to play linebacker, but I saw so many deficiencies in this game as a pure linebacker, and I love Penn State players. You guys know me. I'm I'm a fiend for Penn State. I do think his best ability was coverage as well as pass rush. And to be fair, he's not going to be doing a whole bunch of coverage here for the commanders. But at the same time, he's going to be at least able to leverage his pass rushing ability. And theoretically, if you want to start putting him in different sets, this guy has a lot of versatility to where you can use him as a blitzing linebacker who can drop into zone coverage. I picked number 38 for the Vegas Raiders. Uh, It's a team that honestly, I I think they're misusing a lot of players on defense. I feel like that's one of the main reasons you guys did not win this week is because I was looking at the snap counts for players who I think should be bigger contributors and they were not taking those snaps. Um, But to be fair, both of your inside linebackers are up for a contract. I know it's not a sexy pick, 
But at the same time, also, straight up, use bigger offensive linemen on the interior. You have a 330-pound interior offensive lineman. Use him. He's sitting on the bench right now in Jackson Powers Johnson. Like, use the guy. I want to go after more linebackers as well. And, you know, I love the I love Divine Diablo. You know, I certainly do love the linebackers that you do have on roster. But um, if I'm not mistaken, they're all up for a contract anyways. This whole A lot of the defenders are up for a contract, if my memory serves me correctly. And Jack Kaiser's my number five player in the class. I think he's fantastic. One of the few bright spots for Notre Dame. I pick number 39 for the Arizona Cardinals. This is pass rush all day. Uh, you know, we ended up taking defensive interior round one in Mason Graham. Uh, we're going to go Jalen Walker here, edge out of Georgia. He's also a linebacker, so he gets that coverage ability as well. But Jalen Walker and the very limited reps that he's had at edge, fantastic. Um, I debated taking him above Prince of Umamula and Abdul Carter, but um, Abdul fit a little bit more of the play style that Washington is going to be going for. And I think Jalen Walker is a little bit more in that 240 range a little bit more similar to what you guys have recently drafted. So it just, it fits a little bit more of the profile that you guys are going for. I pick 40 for the Tennessee Titans, another team that certainly could be looking at that edge rusher department. And round number one, we ended up going Travis Hunter. And Travis Hunter is going to play wide receiver for you. No ifs, ands, or buts about it, in my opinion. Looking at the offensive line, because I do think that's the position to address, right? Um, looking at the guys who are available, Jaden Roberts is here former teammate of J.C. Latham as well. And if J.C. continues to struggle at left tackle, you could move J.C. back to right and have Jaden Roberts and J.C. back again. Or you could have Jaden Roberts test at right tackle. I like the flexibility because this team, you can't go wrong with taking a swing on Jaden Roberts. His upside is through the roof. He's a top 32 player on my board. Uh, you can see him sitting at 30. This guy's an absolute stud. And he might he's going to be even higher because I keep bringing it up every episode. Because I'm going to regrade Mitchell Evans when there's enough snaps versus an actually good team. That's why all these players are updated based on their actual grade, not where I think they should be. Because there's certain players that, again, I'm going to wait for all 22 to be able to up them or drop them. And some guys just kind of suck at the start of the year in terms of momentum. The offensive scheme doesn't use them properly. And I'm not going to fully blame them for that in games that I don't think are impactful. So I'm going to wait for Mitchell Evans to play a real solid game where he actually plays more than like eight reps <clears throat> that week one performance is mind boggling, but I digress. Um, that's the reason why you might be seeing guys like Mitchell Evans there, but continuing on at number 41 for the Indianapolis Colts, by the way, I've regraded Travis Hunter again at wide receiver. We'll just leave it there. I'm going to do obviously a video on that coming in the near future, near future is in probably in two months because going over that many receivers plus all the new ones y'all know y'all know i did a top 57 so it's uh it's a little bit different when i do content on 57 receivers but at 41 for the colts uh we ended up going malachi starks and um i have to apologize i love shitting on will fries just because it's one of the things i love to do it, it is what it is but i guess i can let my penn state bias pop out he's actually been the best graded offensive guard so you know shout out to him um, as much as I want to rip him apart, because I still want to say he's ass. You can still play well and be ass. That's that's going to be what I lean on. But um, jokes aside, corner is super key for this team. Uh, you know, with all the issues that are going on in terms of Jalen Jones being your number one starter, which y'all know Jalen Jones, if I'm not mistaken, he was my number one corner going into that year's draft. Fun fact. And then at the end, I think it was like corner five. So it is kind of crazy. He fell to the seventh round. It's like, hey. I ended up losing some confidence. I'm like, damn, that sucks. But he's starting, and he's now the corner one on the team. I love him to death. He doesn't belong as a corner one. With athletic, that athleticism, you got to be able to uh, keep up. And some a guy who I really do think exemplifies the physicality, the size that you guys are looking for, and the potential production would be Azariah Thomas, corner out of Florida State. Now, the thing is, I just don't think he'll go in round two. and it's just based on the fact Florida State's been absolute cheeks this year. Ephesians Prysock, though, I think will. He's six foot four. His top speed is also relatively limited, but it also kind of fits the Juju Brent style. Uh, he is someone who is very physical, very fluid, and uh, has really long arms. He was the number one, or he's, he was the number two to Takario Davis, who was just selected not too long ago. Uh, it does kind of blow my mind that he's not included 
in uh, PFF's list here. But, you know, Washington hasn't played anybody really notice notable yet. So that's why we haven't been able to really talk about him. But we're going to let Tony Grimes be the placeholder. Y'all know I love using placeholders uh, for Ephesians Prysock there, six foot four, nearly 200 pounds. At pick number 42 for the Buffalo Bills, round number one, we ended up going Kevin Winston. I might just go Dan Walker here. I know pass rusher is super duper critical for this team. And there's some good players still out there. I really love Cayman Rucker. And honestly, it's very hard for me to not go after Cayman Rucker at this point. This dude is fantastic. He's very underrated. He's extremely productive. Uh, that's a guy who I'm going to go with. Like, you just need to retool that defense. And then we'll fix the offense as time goes on, man. You just can't miss out on an edge class that I think is not nearly as deep as I was hoping for. You're certainly going to be getting some very good value with guys like Heyman Rucker. At 43 for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Dalen Walker. He's just calling my name, but I obviously it doesn't make any sense. Um, I will just say right now, based on last week's performance, Schurter will not be featured in this episode. So if you guys are wondering like when I'm going to be taking him, I will spoil it for you. It is not going to be in this episode. But in round number one, we ended up going after Edge Rusher and James Pierce. And I think that's the biggest position to address. A running back still is on the table, though. You got some really good backs in here. Really good backs. And I love Bucky Bro Brucky Brooks. <laughs> I mean, I do love Bucky. I'm not 100% of a fan of what he puts out in terms of mock draft content, but I love him to death. Um, but Bucky Irving. I will say, linebacker-wise, I do think you can upgrade. I really do. And... I think Danny Stutzman, because Barrett Carter is my type of guy. He's better than Danny in certain departments, but Danny brings that size to the table at 6'4", and he has some extra weight on him. It just feels like a more complete linebacker, and he flies. He's actually really solid in coverage as well. He's gotten better in the run game, even though he still can't really make a tackle. I still love him to death. He's going to be a really solid addition there. Just retool that defense. Again, for me, I'm just a guy. Retool that damn defense, especially if you're at this spot. It is not the offense. We saw it. I have no issues with the offense. It's the defense that I think could have some holes that we haven't been able to see in a while. Pick 44 for the New Orleans Saints took T-Mac round number one. Um, should we just go on back? Huh? Just, oh, overwhelmingly retool that receiving core right there. Uh, that'd be kind of ridiculous, but I do like the idea of going offensive line here with Blake Miller. Like that's not a bad idea. Tolly's doing a fantastic job transitioning to left. Obviously, Tolly was my he was my right tackle one in last year's class, and um, I think I had him above. I had him above Olu at the start of the year. So obviously, like it's just crazy to see him get this far. I actually do have his phone number. That's kind of fun. But I got to meet him in Mobile. Excellent dude. I think Blake Miller could bring a lot of maybe not the physicality portion. So like maybe Jonas Savanea could be the better option in that regard. That's not a bad idea. Some people think they want to kick Jonah to center or like guard. It has nothing to do with his arm length. It's just more that he's raw. Uh, Blake Miller just doesn't bring the oomph to the table that Jonah does. And I actually think that if you drafted Tali Fuaga, this fits the mental frame far better than Blake Miller. And he's a really, really good blocker. And you get him to pair back up with T-Mac. So you're going a full Arizona draft. We should draft Fafita in like the third or the fourth. There's not a fourth in this. So maybe we could just say that at the end. To complete the perfect trio. At 45 for the Browns, I might just go Dayon Walker at this point. Like BPA is just what I love to do for the Browns. At the same time, you have two contracts coming up with Elijah Moore and Amari Cooper. And Amari Cooper already wants to get the F out of there. So... I mean, thinking that you guys got Ashton Genty, Emeka Abuka is kind of perfect in terms of he's looking healthy. My God, I ended up watching Will Howard and Will Howard again ended up updating him. And, you know, actually, it's one of the few guys I haven't updated on my big board. You're not going to see him anyways, but Emeka looked good. And I'm just so excited for that. Io Maynard, he actually just kind of struggled this past week, but uh, I've been a big fan of his ascension as well. We'll be going Emeka Abuka here. I like that. I like that idea. He's somebody when healthy, when a boundary receiver, he's worth a first round pick. It's just, the question is, can you remain healthy? We'll see this year. And I'm praying to God that's true because I love him to death. It's just, man, when you saw him play injured last year, 
it broke my heart. It really did. But at pick 46 for the Seahawks, uh, in first round, we ended up, what did we do for you in the first round? We got a tackle, maybe potentially a guard, but praying he's a tackle in Emory Jones Jr. This is the perfect opportunity to look at the quarterbacks available. I really do like Quinn Ewers. I mean, I think he's taken a step up this year. I want to see him be more consistent. Go look over on my Twitter. I ended up posting some all 22 clips over there where like Quinn has some passes that I just cannot understand. He just, it's not even like a miscommunication thing because it's in the correct area. It's just completely off. It's a, you, it's not like something that you could chalk up to miscommunication. And then you'll have some of the most jaw dropping throws. Jalen Milrow is just pure athleticism and we haven't seen him be tested yet. So that's also why I haven't reevaluated him. Um, reevaluated all of the rest of these quarterbacks, though, if not mistaken. Shadur's been reevaluated. Quinn, Jalen, uh, not Mertz, but Mertz has been. I don't even think he played last week. I think I was ass benched. Uh, Fafita, neither that, but like players who've actually played a real game, Leonard, Nussmeyer, they've been regraded. So quarterback video, actually not too far away, probably in a week or two. Don't keep your hopes that high. Definitely the two-week mark. That's where you can put your hopes, but. I do think if you are sitting at, what was this, 14? Like, you're going to be looking at a new QB. And as much as I would love Sam Howell to be the guy, I don't know if you would be able to tell at that point. And this is a perfect opportunity to take some really, really good talents. And I think Jalen Milrow could be certainly in that frame of mindset where, you know, he's a big playmaker. And I think that's something you might want someone who's just higher floor. But I just love the idea of using mobility with Jalen Milrow. And his mechanics aren't necessarily the best. But at the same time, you know, the offense, I think, would work really well with Jalen Milrow's skill set. So I'm excited for what he's going to be able to do there. I know that you guys like when I take Jalen Milrow to the Seahawks. At pick 47 for the Steelers, uh, I know that this has trades. It does. There's just so many good players. It's like, how can I say no? I owe Mainers here. Guys, remember when I said, just stick to your strengths? <laughs> like, this is what I'm talking about. Io Manor's on the board, and this team needs a wide receiver too. This is exactly what I'm going for. I'm not even thinking about who else is there. Sometimes you just have to get your guy. Don't big brain it 100% of the time. Go get your guy. At pick number 48 for the Jaguars, we went after a tackle in round number one, and Kelvin Banks ended up slipping. So that was quite nice. Now, at pick 48, I would love to go Dalen Walker. Again, him on the board, I mean, I think of him as developmental, but at the same time, I try to blend it with reality as much as possible. It does feel quite good to always be like, oh, well, nobody knows what's exactly, you know, what exactly is true. So, you know, I could always use that as a bullshit excuse. Regardless, I do think this team needs to look at some extra corner help. And I ended up going Ephesians Prize Sox. This is perfect for Azariah Thomas, Davis, and Benison. And I really do like the idea of going Davis and Benison at this point. Louisville, to be fair, like Quincy Riley with the IQ he brings to the table, the physicality. Um, and then again, my biggest issue with him was play speed, but he has the speed. He's a sprinter and he's a pretty damn decorated sprinter as well, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm going to be going with him. Shout out to Quincy Riley, but he is just extremely physical. His IQ's through the charts, and that's what I fell in love with him about. It was just, I was concerned about his overall athleticism, and that's been answered. So people were like, oh, well, you changed your opinion on Quincy Riley. I did. I did, actually. You're right, but I did it for a good reason, and I'm always going to be honest with you. It's like, yeah, I was uninformed on that, on that part. The moment I'm informed, I'm going to change my opinion if it actually is deserving of changing the opinion. That's called not being arrogant. Some people should try it out. But at number, what is this, 49, we got the Los Angeles Chargers, which in the first round, we drafted Colson Loveland. Dayon Walker just fits perfectly. This is the where I wanted Dayon Walker to go. We're going to be going Dayon at pick number 49. Again, no more trades, but um, this is going to be the Kenneth Grant for this offense. 6'6", 340 pounds, high upside as a pass rusher. To be fair, Kenneth Walker didn't really develop with the last DC that's now on the Chargers. So I have my concerns at the same time, the value just too damn good to pass on. Pick 50 for the Falcons. This could be a trade back spot. We ended up going after a pass rusher in round one, if I'm not mistaken, in uh, Mikel Williams. Now, I do think wide receiver should be on the list of options to go after, but there's a lot of really good ones that, in my opinion, are still available. One of them being Deion Burks. 
Um, who else, honestly, is available? Ricky White. Oh, freaking love Ricky. Is Ricky on here? How on earth do you not put Ricky White on here? I call him Mini Marv, Mini Marvin Harrison. I feel very comfortable with the fact that I don't think these teams are going to be drafting one, uh, drafting the are drafting a receiver. And I do see a couple of teams that should be trying to move up for Quinn Ewers. One of them being the Jets. But let's get ballsy, y'all. Let's get exciting up in here. We're oh, man, it's interdivisional, but we've seen interdivisional trades. I mean, this shit happens all the time. Um, I mean, oof. I mean that. Oof. I really do want to trade up for Quinn Ewers right now. Uh, did I? I didn't take Quinn. I was like, did I take Quinn already? Like, am I just speaking out my ass? And luckily, I am not. Um, this is gonna have to take some. It's gonna have to take a little bit of convincing. But I mean, we've seen these trades happen now. They happen every year. And for the fact that you could end up getting really good draft, like you need the extra picks. Um, and if you can get one between 120 and 192, like a 139, I think that's super critical. I think it's super critical. Uh, I think, I don't know if it would take 139 to move up that far, but you can readjust it. Cause I'm probably not going to trade up or back with the Panthers, or maybe if I do, I would trade just back with the Panthers at that point. Um, but we're actually doing an interdivisional trade. This is actually worth about the point value. And you also get to add a pick for the Falcons. The Panthers are moving up and they're saying, you know what? We didn't want to force a QB, but the value is too damn good for Quinn. He brings that big play upside. And when he's in rhythm, it's hard to get a better QB. The problem is he slips in and out of rhythm. And when he's out of rhythm, that's where the things can start going wrong. But, uh, you know, the, it's just, He's bigger than Bryce. <laughs> like, that's what it comes down to. Uh, and at 50, you're basically saying, hey, we're giving Quinn a test shot. At 50 overall, that's worth it. Even if it ended up costing a little bit more than what you wanted. At pick 51 for the Bears, by the way, all the moves by the Panthers have been trades. Fun fact, all picks have not been the original position. But the Bears, we've gotten guard, we've gotten receiver, we're getting safety, baby. We are. Um, which to be fair, I should have probably done that with the Seahawks because now I kind of feel bad because I ended up saying I was going to go safety with the Seahawks. <sighs> That's okay. There's a lot of really damn good ones in this class. Uh, I'm going Keon Salt though. It's literally just the perfect pick. I think I've done that a couple times now for the Bears. That's just my dream safety for the Bears to replace uh, Kevin Byard. So, you know, him paired up with Jaquan Brisker. Just mwah, chef's kiss, baby. Pick number 52 for the Green Bay Packers. This is a point where we need to start looking at these running backs to fly off the board. Like, it, it's time. It's time for them to at least get some consideration here. Uh, Blake Miller also top top tier tackle for the value at the moment. Like, I have my potential issues with him, but I still think, by the way, Dylan Gabriel is no longer at 41. I forgot to upgrade, hit, uh, downgrade his ass as well. But I digress. I do think this is a great opportunity to take a developmental edge rusher. The Packers just don't need much. They don't. I do think wide receiver could be on their radar, um, but going after another small guy just doesn't really make sense. You'd want a number one style receiver. And to be fair, I think Ricky White could be that. I actually really like Ricky White to the squad. I really do. Uh, and again, they don't have him. So we're just going to use Will Shepard because Will Shepard looks sick in a Colorado uni. So I'm going to boost his ADP for that. But it is going to be my number 38 player in the draft, Ricky White, wide receiver out of UNLV. Uh, he's coming off a week with 111 yards and three touchdowns. So shout out to Ricky. But I, the Packers are good at going after wide receivers outside the first. And he's over six foot. He's 190 pounds. And he is dynamic. I call him mini Marv, mini Marvin Harrison. So it's worth taking at 52. That's for damn sure. Falcons fans might be pissed that they got 137 and don't get to go after Mini Marv. However, I love Dion Burks and I have him higher graded than uh, Mini Marv. Dion Burks is fantastic. He would be, if I'm not mistaken, thinking about the math, I think he'd end up reaching near blue chip level. He'll be a top 10 player on my board if he ends up improving his hands. Like, just to clarify, he is that close. And so far, he hasn't dropped a ball this year. So I'm waiting. I'm waiting probably till halfway through the year to boost him. But the talent is undoubtedly there. It always has been back at Purdue. And it was really just like the 14% a year drops. I was just like, what the hell? So 
uh, Dion Burks going to Atlanta. You know, going after a pass rusher and a top tier receiving option, not a bad idea. Dolphins, this is where you end up actually feeling more comfortable going after offensive linemen. And like you could go after Tate Ratledge here. Um, Jonah Monheim, not a bad choice either. It is what it is. I actually do like the idea of going defensive interior at this point with someone who's a little bit more sizable, like Walter Nolan. And Walter Nolan, he might not have the actual weight size. Oh, he's up to 305. Good job, Walter. He was at 290 last year. Um, this is a guy that you want on your interior. He's super explosive, unbelievably talented. This is a guy who should go round two. It really is. So now you get two key pieces of that defense. The offense will continue to work as it normally does. Pick 55 for the Bengals in the first round. What did we hit you with? Tyleek Williams. Uh, this is where running backs need to come off the board. I was saying it. I keep saying it. It's what's going to happen. Uh, Manongai, freaking monster. But Ollie Gordon's that home run hitter as well. Uh, it's kind of hard to say no to Ollie Gordon at this point. Jonah Coleman is the guy who I want to put as an honorable mention for round number two. Uh, but we're going to go Ollie Gordon because I think that he'll realistically be the third running back off the board. The Jets at pick 56. I think the value is just at this point, you look at the quarterbacks and you're just like, you know, there's some dudes, but there's going to be dudes damn near as good in the next round. I'm going to go after offensive tackle and right tackle with Blake Beller. They don't really have a contingency plan at right tackle. And, you know, the old dudes can only cut it up for so long. And you got... You, you got your future at left tackle. Let's get our future at right in Blake Miller. Pick 57 for the Buffalo Bills. You know, Bills, we've already gone after a few options. Came in Rucker as well as Billy Bowman. Those are kind of the dream choices there. Receiver-wise, we still have some very good ones on the board. And to be fair, a lot of them don't feel very valuable at this point. And looking at my board, you got Jalen Royals here, but Jalen Royals is having a little bit of a down year. Antonio Gates Jr. is being misused again. Um, you guys will see Luther Burden there. He's going to be moving up. Andrew Armstrong. Oh, my God. I freaking love Andrew Armstrong. That dude's like an MVP for Arkansas. Um, you know what? I'm going to go for it. The dude has great size. He's over 190 pounds. He's, I think, six foot three. You can fact check me on that, but unbelievable after the catch and like really smooth as a route runner. So we're going to be using another placeholder on him. Screw you, Julian Fleming, but we are going to be going after. Where is he at? Where is he at on my board? Where the heck is this tool? Donde esta dingus? Um, where, man, my eyes are just garbage at this point, aren't they? Andrew Armstrong, number 61. Overall on my board, again, a lot of this will be continually updated. But at number 58 for the Cowboys, we ended up going after Quinchon Junkins at 26. We're going after receiver here. And um, it's another placeholder value because thank you, PFF. It is Matt Golden, wide receiver out of Texas. So thank you, Theo Weiss, for your service, uh, your ADP boost. But Matt Golden, wide receiver, Texas. He's caught a a touchdown pass and i think he got two the first week but he caught a touchdown pass last week he's been absolutely dynamic transfer from houston like he's someone who i'm a super huge fan of he's my number 71 player in the class right here guys right there big fan of his game again a lot of this is this is preseason right some of the quarterbacks not so much but most of the other positions you know there's not many actually translatable games so far but i picked number 59 for the houston texans uh, we ended up going after not defensive interior in round number one. We went, we did Kenneth Grant. I forgot that they're this far down. I was like, you know, Tyler Williams didn't go to him, but um, this is a prime opportunity to be able to get uh, maybe another defensive back into the mix, like Xavier DeWonkpa, who could be more of that box guy. But at the same time, it kind of sucks because you know I like Jalen Pitry in that role. I do think that. You know, you could try interior offensive linemen here, like Juice Scruggs, replace him with Parker Brailsford for the future, like the vision there. Like, not many things this team really needs to work on. I actually really like getting Barrett Carter into the rotation, though. I think he has the highest ceiling out of the remaining linebackers, not named Deontay Lawson, because Deontay's a freak show. But Barrett Carter actually plays larger than his size, and I really do like his game. I don't think he should slip to the third. And pick number 60 for the Baltimore Ravens. Um... Uh, Round number one, we went after, well, offensive line? Normally we do. We did Arianti Urzuri, and he'll probably play guard in the short run. But 
Uh, looking at other ways to improve the team, I do think you could try to actually improve that edge rushing crew. At the moment, JT Tumalau is not a horrible option. Uh, Colin Oliver is a really good value option if you want to wait a bit, and I think that would kind of do. Receiver-wise, if you want to get someone who has a little bit more force, I would say Trey Harris, not a bad choice. He's a very, very popular um, he's a very popular receiver, but at this point, running back could also be in the play. I know that you got Rasheen Ali, but when the value hits you in the face like this, Derrick Henry is going to be there for one more year. You might not be able to say no. Um, at the same time, I do like the idea of continuing to boost that offensive line. It's just, this team doesn't need that much in retrospect. We're going to be going corner. Screw it. Stick bug Wiggins needs an actual number two corner. And we're going to be going to Ohio State and Davison Benison. He's a really good corner. Doesn't get the respect he deserves. Jordan Hancock's going to be my placeholder. So at least you know it's an Ohio State corner. My number six player in the draft at the moment, Davison Benison goes to the ba Bengals. I saw the B and I just instantly said it uh, to the Baltimore Ravens. Pick number 61 for the Detroit Lions. We're going edge rusher here. Round number one, we went after offensive lineman in Tyler Booker. We're going to be going JT Tumalau at this point. Jack Sawyer, perfectly fine option if you want to substitute him there. I'm just higher on JT Tumalau. At pick 62, the Eagles went after their own edge rusher slash linebacker in round number one with Harold Perkins. Here in round number two, could see some defensive interior help, but Moro Jomo's doing a great job there. I like the idea of potentially developing an offensive tackle. And you could go Anthony Belton here, who's 6'6". He is a left tackle, but I could see him potentially shifting to the right side. Um, you could also go after another small interior offensive lineman with Parker Brailsford. But, you know, I just don't really feel the need at the moment. I just don't see it. I don't see the value there. And with all the great running backs on the board, ooh, tight end is kind of key. Tyler Warren's here. Hate to be boring. I always go Tyler Warren for this team. We're going to be doing it again. I know that, I mean, people love the pick. So sorry to be boring, but Tyler Warren's fantastic and he's been performing very, very well. He's going to get the love he deserves. At pick 63 for the Niners, you know, uh, round one, we went after Marcus Bow, my number seven player in the class. Uh, let's see if we can get any more really, really good options here. And I keep taking corner for the Niners, you know, thinking about like, hey, they need some extra defensive back help. Second round last year, they got Renardo Green. Now, you could always get a lot more depth than that. Like, let me make that clear. But it's still worth mentioning there. I do think Sam Linebacker, not out of the picture. Someone like Jamon Dumas Johnson would be a really good choice for it. But just not here in round number two. Um, looking at the options that I think are best for the Niners, I mean, it's really down to offensive line at this point. And we got the right tackle. I think going after a developmental left is not a bad idea. You guys might not like the idea of doing back-to-back -back offensive tackles, but Anthony Belton should play guard for a year. Well, uh, or maybe a year or two, but like this guy is pure power. Like you can tell he's already has four pressures on a year. Granted, he went up against Tennessee. So, you know, RIP to that. But he's 6'6", 340. This dude's an absolute animal. I'm just all for going after offensive line for the uh, for the Niners as much as I can until I kind of get worn out. At pick 64 for the Chiefs, this is my big brain move, and it might not be great in your opinion, but it's great in mine. It's Tate Ratledge, guard out of Georgia. It might not be a Jaden Roberts, but the talent floor is ridiculously higher. This dude is just damn rock solid. That was my idea the whole time. Get yourself the instant impact players. So Tate Ratledge in instantly replaces Trey Smith. Do you get a 10%, maybe 20% reduction? Yes. But I don't think that really changes into losses or any form of actual impact on your actual performance the way that you might think that talent drop would. Because he's still a damn good player. You might not just have him pancaking every dude every time he blocks him. But you now have Bond and you have Ratledge. Those are two super weapons for you because they fill guys who are departing with really, really good talent. Pick number 65 for the Panthers. Uh, they moved up and moved back a lot. Deep down, I just want to continue moving because I don't really want to sit here at pick 65 after giving up multiple early day three picks. And honestly, when I'm looking at a guy like Josh Simmons being available, 
I should be sending the house if I am sitting here with a team like Washington, which to be fair, like Washington needs a tackle. This is perfect for them. And I think it's going to be a little bit more desperate. I'm looking at some teams that could be looking at tackle. The Cardinals, they could use someone who's a guard slash tackle. Absolutely. And I think Josh Simmons would be fine for that. Um, if we're going to be 100% honest here, the Browns could be looking because Jedrick Wills still hasn't signed his contract. Um, you know, there are teams, the Bears, the Bears could be looking for a guy. So I do think the value is going to be a little bit conflated here. And it's a four spot move. I think maybe you'll be able to get 141 out of this. So we're going to do it. It says 95% chance. So I, I ended up not even forcing that one. We push it through. The commanders need a guy. And then we just move back a good portion, only like only this amount. And we still got really, really good value. So in total, we got three really classy dudes, including a fifth year contract that we didn't have before in order to move back. How many spots was that? Like, wasn't noticeable <laughs> comparatively. But we get Josh Simmons for the commanders, which is a massive need. Offensive line is such a huge need. It's kind of, I felt bad going Abdul Carter. So Josh Simmons, absolutely worth it. Kind of ridiculous that he's there. 66 for the Broncos. I'm going running back here. You know what? We need extra firepower. Uh, I don't know why it clicked tight end as well, but. You know, it does remind me of all the tight ends that have yet to truly perform. But looking at the guys available, I'm a sucker for Kyle Manungai at this point. He doesn't have an all 22 grade. That's why he's not on my board. But this dude produces like a mofo. I think 208 yards this past week. Fantastic. But this guy, they need to continue to improve and take the stress off of um, their QB one. But going after a tackle, a corner and a running back at this point, Really, really solid value. Pick number 67 for the Giants, another team that should be looking at running back. Um, it kind of pissed me off because you're not using the um, the running back that you do have in Devin Singletary properly. But I really do like the idea of Amari and Hampton being the long-term option for him. Uh, at the moment, we've gone after quarterback, and then we did send that second-round pick. We ended up getting some good value with another early fourth-round pick. But you know, there's not too many massive issues to be fair i think we could look at that corner room i still haven't drafted you know what you guys like to draft the corners i'm overly high on um i like going running back but this class does have some good guys i'm gonna go azariah thomas corner out of florida state I'm gonna double check that i haven't actually drafted him yet because you, you guys never know my I mean, you guys know my mind goes everywhere i do not see a placeholder that i normally would put for him and um central cypress goes to the same team he is not going to be a third round pick i can guarantee you that based on what I'm drafting, not saying in the future, but uh, I'm going to use him as a placeholder for my number 13 player in the class, Azariah Thomas. You ended up drafting a top 10 player for me in, um, why am I bugging on players' names now? Like, what the hell, dude? <laughs> uh, to be fair, I'm coming off a 10-hour workday and immediately sitting down to do this, so I have some excuses, but um, the slot that you guys have out of Kentucky, why am I forgetting one of my favorite players' names? It'll come to me in a minute, but Regardless, you drafted one of my favorite corners last year. I'm going to have you do it again this year with my number 12 player, Ephesians Prysock. Pick number 68 for the New England Patriots. Uh, you know, it's a team that needs a lot, but also not a ton at the same time based on what we've drafted. Omamulin and um, Paris, Cam Paris Campbell. <laughs> Will Campbell. Man, brain rot is a real thing, isn't it? Uh, both of those guys are fantastic and they fill massive voids. I do think this is where you can try to take another very, very solid corner. And this is even if you bring a second contract or another contract to um, to Jones, I'm going to be going Tommy Hill here. I really do bring his think his physicality, his IQ, his work ethic. It's perfect for the team. Pick 69 for the Carolina Panthers. So we traded back. We got that fourth round pick again and we could do it again. Like literally, I don't feel like pressured to do anything at this point. We got our quarterback, we got our corner, we got our edge rusher. Those are the really big key positions for us to have targeted there. Um, to be fair, God, I love the idea of bringing Sebastian Castro to this team. Not that I think that you're desperate for a defensive back like that, but just the value is so damn good. I actually want to see a team that could use somebody like Sebastian Castro. And to be fair, I think the Jaguars could use somebody in that department. I think the Steelers, I know Beanie Bishop's doing a good job though. The Steelers wouldn't be desperate to move up for Castro. Um, 
God, I just, I really love Sebastian Castro. He's sitting there at 17 right in front of your face. So keep that in mind. I also love Damani Jackson. There's a lot of players who I think are doing a very, very good job. So it's a kind of just a breath of wealth at the moment. Some good options to say the least. Uh, Trevor Etienne's on the board. I do think the Panthers could be in the market for another running back to add as a one-two punch for the long haul. Um, man, I just don't really... I don't really like sticking and picking here. That's just not kind of going to be my vibe for the moment. Xavier Nwankwa as a linebacker, though, this gives me big time Jeremy Chin vibes. So we're going to be going after it. I love Xavier Nwankwa. Just don't put him in man to man coverage. He's my number 32 player on my board. Pick number 70 for the Vegas Raiders. Whew, it's a, it's, this is a team that I could justify going after a running back for. Um, they're a really, really good squad. Again, we got our quarterback of the future in Miller Moss. We got Jack Kaiser. Uh, let's continue to add some juice to this team. And I know that you guys like a little bit of power. And, you know, Zeus White will be that for you. But I just don't think you have the thunder yet. Trevor Etienne's freaking awesome. He just hasn't had the carries yet at Georgia, the volume to justify pick 70. But he's picking up in terms of the carries. I think he was injured week one for... I just can't remember if I'm going to be blunt. But number 71 for the Cardinals, another team that I think you could be trying to pair up somebody for the future with. Um, why am I? Why the hell am I forgetting everybody's name? Running back Florida State last year, he drafted, I think, at 71 or in the 60s. Um, 66, my bad. But forgetting names off the top of my head, who gives a shit as long as we actually know who they are. We've ended up drafting our edge rusher and Jalen Walker. We got our defensive interior with Mason Graham. Let's just go after a really high overall offensive lineman. I like Jonah Monheim here, but I really like Parker Brailsford. He's up to 290, though. I just don't think that he's going to be. To be fair, Steichen had a lot of success with Kelsey as center, which, I mean, it's not Steichen. I'm tripping balls, dude. He's on freaking, he's on the Colts. But um, Gannon, he was a beneficiary of a light interior offensive lineman. Parker Brailford, awesome, awesome, man. He plays way larger than when he was at 275, and I think he's going to be continuing to do a phenomenal job going forward. The weight might scare some people, but we've had some really high-quality offensive linemen at smaller weights just because they know how to use it. Pick 72 for the Chiefs, another guy who I would have loved for them, but they like guys a little bit more of a frame. I think this is a perfect opportunity again for another running back here with Trey Henderson being the pairing for the future with um, with Isaiah Pacheco. My God, that's a really, really dynamic duo. And you're looking at the fact you got Tate Ratledge, Isaiah Bond and Trey Henderson. I know it's all offense, but this team really knows how to work with the defensive pieces. I feel perfectly justified with being able to bring on the best player available. Don't force a pick that you need. Get a player that is genuinely going to boost your team. Pick number 73 for the Colts. Uh, looking at the options that are available for them. Oh, man. It's, I, I just want to get rid of Sebastian Castro off the board. I just want to throw his ass off the board. But uh, it's a team that doesn't need too much. We've gone after corner. We've gone after safety. Those are the big positions to target. Uh, you could try to get some extra edge rushing help at this point and getting some depth with a guy like Jack Sawyer, who has a super high floor because of his run stopping ability. Not a bad choice. Not a bad choice at all. He's just a little bit more of a brute. And you know what? I think that's perfectly fine. I think it's nice time to be able to get yourself a high floor edge rusher, pairing him up with Law 2, which kind of, again, it's like a lightning and thunder approach. You got your run stuffer and your more task rushing savvy edge rushers pick number 74 for the jacksonville jaguars there uh, we've gone after corner right we ended up going after one of my favorite corners in the entire draft uh, my number 12 player 13 azariah thomas did we go azariah to this team why am i tripping balls no i went him to win him for new york what did we do for the jags last time they were on quincy riley it's the same thing both of the guys are really good athletes who are very powerful but at 74 for the Jaguars. We've gone corner. We've gone offensive tackle. Let's get another receiving weapon, man. Why not? And there's some really good ones still on the board. I think Trey Harris fits a very similar mold to what you'd be looking at to pair with Brian Thomas. So we're going to be going after it. Big physical receiver, but still has really good deep speed. Pick 75 for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So 
looking at the options for them, we've gone after edge rusher and we've gone after linebacker as well. I told you, let's go defense heavy. And you got Sebastian Castro here who's nuts. I really love Billy Bowman though. Billy Bowman is going to be that. He's just such a dog. He belongs with uh, Antoine Winfield Jr. there in that backfield. Billy Bowman Jr. going to be the selection there for Tampa. At 76 for the Saints, I want to actually take a high upside safety. We've gone after offensive line as well as receiver. Uh, we're going to be going after defensive back here. Again, Sebastian Castro, there's nobody going to be taking a Lante Taylor spot anytime soon in my opinion. We're going to go after a super high upside safety who has great mobility, who's going to learn a lot from the honey badge in Dante Trader Jr. At 77 for the Browns, there's a lot of talk about the contracts in that corner room. This is where I feel comfortable taking Sebastian Castro as a flexible defensive back. This dude's fantastic. Unbelievable IQ. His big issue is that he's just not super duper athletic, but my God, is he fantastic in terms of actual talent. I just took three safeties ahead of the one team I'm dying to take a safety for. You gotta be kidding me. To be fair, there are still some safeties that I think might be better than Bowman and Trader, just not as good fits. Like Rod Moore, I see like a ton of potential with him, but Xavier Watts fits Seattle. I don't know why, but he does. He bring, He's a big play potential guy. I think he led college football in picks last year with like eight or nine. This dude's a big playmaker waiting to happen. This is the safety you're looking for. So we have a safety. Well, again, Sebastian Castro is a slot corner, but we kind of have a safety run there from 75 to 78. The Steelers are sitting there at 79. I would have loved Sebastian Castro on my Steelers, but we got a like Io Maynard as well as uh, Drew Alar. So two really key players going forward. I said we're going to probably bring back Dante Jackson, praying to God that that's actually what happens. The defensive interior is still is a position to target. I know we just signed Cam Ward to a three-year deal, but if you actually look at the guarantees, it's, if I'm not mistaken, it was only like a one-year deal. You guys can correct me on that. I know there's one player who got signed to a three-year deal and it was actually just a one-year deal. And I'm pretty sure it was Cam Hayward. It was like, he's there for, like at least we could kind of convert stuff because that's what we do. We convert salary into signing bonus. And I think that's what's going to happen. But uh, Bear Alexander's perfect for us. We need some extra defense interior help uh, for the long haul because I love Larry Ogunjobi. Obviously, I don't have an issue with our defensive interior. Our defense has been doing great. At the same time, I really do want to take advantage of the opportunity to take a player that is slipping solely because of potential motor concerns and put him with Cam Hayward because then you have give him his best shot to be his best self. Pick 80 for the Jaguars. Oh, the Jags. Why are you guys killing me here? <laughs> uh, we went receiver. We've gone tackle. We've gone corner. I think those are the big issues to solve on the team. Now let's kind of look at some other positions that are maybe upgradable. I think tight end at this point, you got these really, really solid tight ends who just haven't been able to really meet expectations. But you also, I mean, you have Evan Ingram on the team. So, I mean, it's just, you might want to go Jake Brenningstool at this point. You might. I just don't think that's logical. I don't think that's what you're going to do. You went after defense interior a lot last year. Let's get some extra edge depth at this point. I think that's perfectly fine. Uh, Ashton Galote is just not, not it. Not it, in my opinion, for this type of system. I really do like his game as a power guy, but I'd want him more on like a Philadelphia Eagles style where you're going to be able to kick him in Fangio system inside and be able to use him as a weird tweener. Uh, Landon Jackson, excuse me, Landon Jackson has great athleticism for his size. And I feel like bulky just, I mean, we all know bulky loves his physical freaks and Landon Jackson at six, eight really does bring some very, or I think he's six, seven or six, six at two eighty. really brings some freaky athleticism to the table. I just think he needs to put it all together. But if you give him a year or two with the right situations and you guys have proven to develop that type of talent, I don't think you can say no. At 81 for the Chargers, this is the perfect opportunity to go after a guy like Amari and Hampton. Um, you know, just the value is too damn good. Don't pass on it. I think he stumbles into success a lot, but, um, you know, there's always room for improvement. And obviously, if he improves, I'm going to be super happy for him. 82 for the New England Patriots. You know, we've gone after edge rusher. We've gone after uh, tackle. Those are the big ones. We've gone after corner as well. That's the other big one. I'm pretty happy right now with where the team is at. 
Um, tight end wise, though, this is where we start taking them. And Terrence Ferguson's really good. Luke Lachey, Mitchell Evans. I'm going to go after Mitchell. I think he's going to re- have a resurgence. I think he's going to be damn great. And, you know, getting a number one tight end at this point is super duper critical. And I think he's going to be a really good addition. For the Bears, we've gone after line. We've gone after safety. We've gone after uh, receiver as well. This is where we can get one of those edge threes. And um, Colin Oliver, he's a nasty player. But Patrick Payton, Shamar Stewart. I really like Shamar Stewart. We could look at the defensive interiors as well. Um, just not a fan of Dante Corleone. Just not going to be one of my guys in this. I love Shamar Turner, though. Shamar is a beast. You know, he's 6'4", 300, but plays edge rusher, too. He fits exactly like what I was kind of confused about with uh, Gervin Dexter. He was like kind of a guy who is like awkwardly athletic for defensive interior and kind of moved like a pass rusher. I actually think Shamar Turner fits what you guys are going for. And by the way, he is a top 40 player on my board. So it all works out. Pick 84 for the Green Bay Packers. Uh, We've gone, I can't even remember at this point fully. We've gone after Siobhan Ravel, top tier corner. We went after Will Shepard. Just kidding. We didn't go after Will Shepard. Who who was Will Shepard? I'm tripping balls. Who did we go after? Um, it wasn't Bo Collins. Bo Collins, by the way, I I still have him on the board. Still, he should be going. Or did I take him before? Why am I tripping? Um, I ended up taking a receiver. You guys can go back in the video and remember that one. I Oh, no, it was Ricky White. I'm tripping. Uh, but I also do think that it isn't out of the question, by the way, for Bo Collins to slip this far because just Notre Dame's not doing well at all and people just don't have the eyes on him the way they used to. It's not out of the question. I think Bo Collins could certainly be here at this spot. Good players fall all the time. But we got our receiver. Uh, we got our corner. I think now is just go after the best talent on the board. You got Shamar Stewart. You got Ashton Gillette or Galote, whatever the hell you want to call him. I'm going to go Shamar Stewart here. You can go check out his size and weight right there, 6'6", 290. Goddamn. Um, he's a freak as well. You know, that whole entire Texas A&M defensive line is ridiculous. It's kind of a shame that they can't put it all together. At pick 85 for the Los Angeles Rams, we've gone after quarterback for them. And in round number two, am I tripping? Where did we take? Did they not have a round two? I don't think they did because they traded it to Carolina as part of their move up for their defensive interior. So, Braden Fisk, this is because of you. Um, I do think the Rams should be looking in the market for another receiver. Even though they're really good at sniping them, like all their receivers are sniped. But this is also territory for a snipe. We're going to go Bo Collins. And um, we're going to use Nick Anderson as the placeholder because I do not think he's a third-round receiver. Uh, Bo Collins, my number 10 player in the class. He's a 6'3", 200. He's a really talented guy. Just people will not be overly excited. He's not going to be a combine warrior in terms of explosiveness, top end speed. But technique wise, he is out of this world. And that is literally what the Rams have uh, succeeded on. That's kind of their bread and butter. For the Eagles, we have drafted edge rusher for them as well as tight end. Those are the key positions to target. Uh, You could get a developmental quarterback at this point if you wanted to. If you wanted to. Because I do think the rest of the offense is working so well that quarterback could be the way that you provide a little bit of upside, but the third round, let's not do that. Uh, You could certainly go for your offensive tackle. That's developmental right now. And I think Josh Connolly is perfect for that former five-star. He's not even really fully succeeding at left tackle. What's the risk with taking him and developing him as a right tackle? Um, Because he's just so freaky. Johnny Cornelius is higher floor, but Josh Connolly has crazy ceiling and let him be the backup to lane for a little bit. At pick number 87 for the Bengals, it's another team that I do think could have been in the market for Josh Connerly. But so far, we got a running back for him. Where did we take him? We took Ollie as well as defenseman here with Ty Leak Williams in round number one. At this point, offensive line is never a bad idea. And I really do love the flexibility that Jonah Monheim brings to the table. He even was a left tackle as well. I think flexibility is super key. Protecting Joe Burrow is super key. Receiver could be a great option, but we've taken so many at this point. Let's um let's focus on what will actually give us the best return on investment. Pick number 88 for the New York Jets. We took Jaden Higgins round number one. Love Jaden Higgins. But also, we ended up taking Blake Miller in round number two. 
Here in round number three, I do think you could try to relieve some stress off of Brees Hall with a running back like Jonah Coleman. And Jonah Coleman's fantastic. I do have him as a top 64 player, if I'm not mistaken. I might have lied. Did I lie? Probably lied. I definitely have him as a top 87 player. I just probably missed him in that. Uh, Jonah Coleman's going to be the selection, though. I think that dude's fantastic. Pick number 89 for the Buffalo Bills. It's another team that I think Jonah Coleman would have been a good option on. But we've gone receiver for him. We better have gone receiver for him. Did we not? I'm going to attack myself. We did. <laughs> I was going to just straight up go after myself if we did not go after a receiver for him. Um, again, I'm honestly slipping. Men like My mind is slipping where uh, we ended up taking. Like, which receiver? Oh, I think we took... Did we take Matt Golden? We didn't take Matt Golden for him. I'm going to let my mind make up a receiver that we ended up taking for you guys. And that's on me. But again, my brain is kind of mush at the moment. I'm just trying to have some fun while enjoying this time with you guys. But we've taken that top tier receiver for him because I would not take a receiver I don't like for your team. So keep that in mind too. But uh, we took a really good receiver. Forgetting his name off the top of my head. We've also taken... Um, did we take an edge rusher in round number one? Because I do think this team needs edge. But no, I ended up considering it next time. We got Kevin Winston there at 25. And then not to mention that we got... Oh, we did. We got edge rusher, came in Rucker. So cool. Got all that fixed up. All the fixings. You just paid your right tackle, which I would have went on Johnny Cornelius before doing that. But keeping all those factors in mind, let's get some extra defensive help here. I really like Maxwell Harrison, but Jabbar Muhammad is so feisty. Even though he's a little bit on the smaller side, I think that he's going to bring a lot of upside that I personally would take a risk on. Jabbar Muhammad, he's a top 32 player on my board, worth the risk. Dallas Cowboys at 90. Uh, you know, you guys have a developing offensive line. It's doing well. Uh, our other picks that we've done so far, that was Matt Golden. Matt Golden was that selection, which means I took a receiver near Matt Golden. <laughs> I'm trying to figure this out for you guys live while trying to remember it because i obviously can't replay the video oh i went andrew armstrong for you guys oh, i love andrew armstrong i'm happy for that for the bills fans i digress we went matt golden and um in the first round I went quinshot Jenkins. so good group of players right there a linebacker we could certainly try to address it with someone like lander barton who is very widely respected and Honestly, that's a really solid pick at 90. You get him in the rotation with DeMarvian Overshone, Damone Clark. It's a good group of guys. And I think that's super key for the Cowboys to be able to have that Super Bowl style run is just have really solid depth. And Lander Barton might be the true starter because Kendrick's on a one-year deal. Pick 91 for the Houston Texans. We've gone after Barrett Carter. We've also gone after Kenneth Grant. Now for the offensive side, because I still think we need to go after offense, uh, I really like the idea of Jake Slaughter. He was, he's tied actually right now. He might be like quarter point lower. He's up to 308. Good for him. Um, but he was on the little bit of the lighter side, but he's actually one of the best centers in the class. I'm a huge fan of him. And you need interior offensive line depth. I'm so happy to see Kenyon Green taking that big step up. Not Kendrick. We know that guy ain't doing shit, but uh, Kenyon Green doing a great job. 92 for the Ravens. I might want to boost their defensive interior here, but at the same time, this would be a great opportunity to get a quarterback that can mimic what uh, what Lamar can do and bring some you know some upgrade potential there. Not like in terms of upgrading over Lamar, but being able to keep Lamar rested on certain games because thirty nine thousand year old Johnson should not be your backup, and I just don't like what you guys have. Like, let me know. I'm not going to pull the trigger. Let me know what you guys think about Jalen Daniels there, because I really do think that he is probably perfect for the Ravens at this point. Running back wise, is there anybody that we've absolutely shanked? I love Nicholas Singleton, Katron Allen. Both of those guys are fantastic. Um, so, I mean, keep those guys in mind. Absolutely. But we're probably going to pass on that for the moment. This might just be the spot where you end up getting another offensive lineman for some good depth here. And you know, that could be someone like a Johnny Cornelius who can step in day one and end up doing a damn good job. Ernest Green is just going to be Ernest Green, man. He's a guard at heart. I don't trust him. We've gone after corner already. Um, what's what's the best player available? Actually, I think Harold Cross fits this team as more of like a flexible defensive interior slash edge rusher hybrid as a tweener because this team always loves to take 
the best player available. And not only that, they love to experiment on with certain players in terms of certain body types and having um I think it's what Naughty and Gakwe. Not in Gakwe, I'm tripping balls, man. Matabuike. Um, you know, having Matabuike train up Howard Cross to be more efficient, even though he's like a little bit lighter, that's gonna be ridiculous. He has unbelievable untapped potential. So I'm gonna be seeing that come to fruition there in Baltimore, which I'm not a super huge fan of because I'm a Steelers fan, but that's uh that's good enough reason for me. For the Lions, we've gone after edge rusher with JT Tumalau. We've also gone after guard with Tyler Booker. Getting a bigger, more physical receiver to me should be uh, on my short list of things to go after. And it's going to be down to Kyron Lacey, receiver out of LSU. And then I just don't think he'll go this high, but I love Colby Young out of Georgia. So I'm actually going to go Kyron Lacey here. And Lo and behold, PFF doesn't have him. J. Michael Sturdivant's going to be the placeholder, but it is going to be Kyron Lacey, my number 91 player in the class. Uh, he's done a fantastic job. He's going to be continuing to ascend as well. Number 94 for the Eagles. Another pick for the Eagles. This could be a QB. I think Jalen Daniels is worth taking at this pot. I think Kenny Pickett, fine backup. Tanner McKee, really good backup. But if you want to really put pedal to the metal, there's just not many positions that you can fully target without realizing that Jalen Daniels could be, if he continues developing, your best quarterback on your roster. I know it's ballsy as hell to say it, but I do think he's worth the pick, and I'm going to be taking him here. Let me know what you think. I know it's going to piss some people off, but you guys also know I love you, and I hope you love me too. Pick number 95 for the Niners. Edge rusher, edge rusher, edge rusher. I'm going to go after the best ones available. Danny Dennis Sutton is a little bit more of that physical profile that you guys are looking for. Double checking that I have not taken an edge rusher yet for you, and I have not gone after a couple offensive linemen. We're going to go Danny Dennis Sutton here, 270. Um, more productive than Abdul Carter as well. Pick 96 for Kansas City. Let's go defensive interior for him. We haven't done that yet. Uh, we got our running back. We got our lineman. We got our receiver. TJ Sanders has been having himself a year. Just a little bit on the lighter side. So, I mean, just keep that in mind. Um, with that being said, I just don't. I feel a little bit bad about going after him since he's so undersized. I know that size is a legitimate factor there for Spag. Uh, Riley Mills, he's a really good run defender. And to be fair, defense interior is kind of ass, isn't it? Huh. Damn. I know it's not ideal. We should have went after defense interior earlier. I tried to big brain it. That part didn't work. Uh, you know, Noah Gray just got his contract, but at the same time, oh, you got Jared Wiley too. Too many mouths to feed right there. Uh, we've addressed offense as much as we can. Could go after another offensive tackle here. Actually, a Johnny Cornelius is really, really good value, um, especially with the potential penalties that may ensue based on your right tackle. Jawan Taylor kind of being um, a rule breaker that kind of gets away with it week one and then gets absolutely shellacked for it. And then Johnny Cornelius is a really good contingency plan. At least gets you good tackle depth at 97 for the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, good team. I honestly think that this could be a proper trade back spot because you just don't have enough picks. It's just, it's not, you don't have enough, but you know, you got your star at corner with Denzel Burke really do like what he brings to the table. Defensive interior. This is where I would be fine with TJ Sanders. I know you just paid Harrison, so um, that's cool. Love him. Or I'm just, I'm tripping on people's names today. You just paid your defensive interior. Uh, you could go after someone like Lathan Ransom, who I think is a stud. Uh, but at the same time, I do think this is the prime opportunity to get out of here. I think we should go after. We should move up with a team that does uh, need a corner. And we've already gotten one with the commanders. Could always get a second because the secondary is absolute cheeks. And this is prime real estate to make a move like that. Uh, you could also, once again, move up with another team that hasn't taken a corner yet. Uh, for the Patriots, who do we take for a corner? I'm tripping. We got Mitchell Evans for the Patriots. Uh, we got Tommy Hill. Okay, good. I was like, I, was like, I know that we got one for him. Uh, but you're also looking at a team like the Seattle Seahawks that I think could be a little bit more aggressive, but also New York. I mean, let's see the players that are available. We got multiple picks for them. Do we have a really solid tackle on the board? Uh, you could go Wyatt Millen. It, based on that answer, you know the answer's no. <laughs> you know the answer's no. Uh, running back, though, there's some really, really good options available. Like, I really like Nick Singleton. And um, to be fair, 
the Vikings aren't out of a position to go after Nick Singleton. So we're going to go with it. This dude's been uber productive this year. I really do like what he could um, add as a really reliable back. At pick 98 for the Rams, uh, this is where they usually take their linebackers. Love that. Uh, Deontay Lawson's right up their alley. And I think that he'd be a really, really solid player. Jay Higgins as well. But for the Rams, just get themselves a super talented guy. Uh, same thing with the Dolphins. This could be a quick run on linebackers right here, by the way. Uh, you know, Jamon Dumas Johnson, super solid. Jay Sean Barham had a little bit of a struggle bus week. But Jay Higgins has been super reliable, just not uber athletic. And I honestly think that's fine. Take a shot on the guy. At pick 100, we're going to quickly review what we did for the Dolphins in round two. We did Walter Nolan, and then in the first, we ended up going after Nickamon Wari. So we've been very, very focused on that defense. Let's get some help on the offense here. And looking at what we could do, uh, Dylan Fairchild's super solid. Luke Condra, super solid. I really like Clay Webb as well. But we're actually going to go after someone with some versatility here in Ernest Green. Tackle out of Georgia. He's a guard to me, but if... Worst comes to worst, he at least has experience at tackle. And at 101 for the Niners, uh, I do kind of want to end this off with uh, with a little bit of a bang here. And, I mean, I love Fafita. I do. It's not for the Niners, necessarily. I'm talking about a potential trade-up here. Uh, Dylan Gabriel deserves some respect as well. It's just like, oh, these quarterbacks are not doing a really good job. The Nuss bus might be fun. Let's have a team move up for Nuss. And Nussmeyer has some crazy high-level throws. I really do appreciate that about him. Uh, but, like, what's a team that could even do that? You know, like, all these top teams kind of have their guy already. Uh, but, I mean, the Titans. The Titans could be right in that market. Um, honestly, I'm going to have the Titans trade a... I think they'll trade a future third to be able to get this through. Because I'm actually going to add picks to this from the Niners side. They're going to trade a future th um, third or fourth. I don't know what would actually get this through. To be able to add a pick as well. The trade is lopsided. You can kiss my ass. Uh, but the Titans end up getting their quarterback here. And it could be Connor Wegman. But it could be like Donovan Smith technically. Dylan Gabriel. Uh, but I think Garrett Nussmeyer does bring the highest ceiling out of the, or highest floor, at least out of the players. So Nuss Bus is going to be that pick. That's going to be the video. Thank you so much for watching. I love you. See you on the far side. Peace.